Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of epididymitis. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what epididymitis is. So epididymitis is a urologic condition involving inflammation of the epididymis. So the epididymis is going to be this tubular structure located on the posterior testis. So it's contained within the scrotum, and it's going to be again on the posterior testis. And the epididymis is going to be important because it's involved in storage and maturation of sperm. Now, epididymitis is again going to be an inflammation of this tubular epididymis, and it can be due to a variety of causes, including infectious and non-infectious causes. So some bacteria can lead to infection of this tubular structure, whereas some non-infectious causes like urinary reflux can lead to this condition as well. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on this topic. This condition is estimated to affect 1 in 1,000 males per year, and it is the fifth most common urologic condition. But the topic of this lesson is that there are a variety of signs and symptoms that can occur in epididymitis, and we're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. So the signs and symptoms of epididymitis are going to often develop over the course of several days. So by far the most important symptom of epididymitis is going to be scrotal pain. So because the epididymis is going to be on the posterior testis, and it, if it becomes inflamed, we can see issues with scrotal pain. Often the scrotal pain is going to have a slow onset, it's going to be unilateral, so only one side of the scrotum is going to be affected. And the scrotum is most likely going to be swollen as well, so there's going to be a bit of swelling. And it may be very warm and or reddened in appearance. And then if you were to actually touch the posterior scrotum particularly, it's going to be very tender to palpation. So again, it's going to be a scrotal pain that's going to often be one-sided. It's going to be often swollen, maybe very warm or reddened, and it's going to be very tender to palpation. Those are going to be hallmark findings of epididymitis. We can also see a fever occurring as well in epididymitis because there is often an infection and inflammation, we can see a fever occurring. So a fever is going to be greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, although I mentioned a fever here, we don't necessarily have to have a fever. There may or may not be a fever. If we were to actually look at adult patients versus children, adult patients are going to be less likely to have a fever from epididymitis. A quarter of adult patients will have a fever if they have epididymitis, whereas three quarters of children will have a fever if they have epididymitis. And again, this is going to be due to inflammation and often an infection of the epididymis. Now, it can be common that patients can have lower urinary tract symptoms, or what we call LUTs. So some of these can include urgency. So urinary urgency can be something that can be found in epididymitis as well. So a feeling of urgently needing to urinate. This can be something that can be found in epididymitis. We can also see urinary frequency. So having an increased frequency of urination can be common as well. And oftentimes patients will urinate so frequently that each urination will only have very small volumes of urine. And even if they have completely emptied their bladder, they may still feel like they need to urinate as well. And then we can also see dysuria as well. So dysuria is going to be a burning sensation during urination. So all of these signs and symptoms are going to be signs and symptoms of a urinary tract infection, but we can also see them occurring in epididymitis. So if you see unilateral scrotal pain with swelling and redness of the scrotum, that's tender to palpation. And we also see some of these other lower urinary tract symptoms. This can all be part of the one clinical presentation of epididymitis. Now, some other important signs that can be found in epididymitis is blood in the semen. So blood may be found in semen. It can be microscopic or macroscopic. Microscopic meaning that there may be blood in the semen that is not visible to the patient. Or it could be macroscopic, meaning that it is visible. We can actually see red blood in the semen. And again, this is not going to occur in all patients with epididymitis, but it can occur in some. We can also see lymphadenopathy in epididymitis as well. So it's going to be more specifically inguinal lymphadenopathy. So if we look at this image here, this is where the inguinal lymph nodes are located. So they're in the groin area. And these inguinal or groin lymph nodes are going to become swollen and tender to touch. And it's going to be due to draining from the epididymis. So because the epididymis is undergoing inflammation or an infection, the epididymis can drain to these inguinal lymph nodes, leading to swollen, tender inguinal lymph nodes. And then we can also see urethral discharge occurring as well. So this is a discharge from the urethra. This urethral discharge may or may not be purulent. It may be purulent in some cases. So purulent means that it may be pus-like in appearance. And this urethral discharge may occur even prior to other symptoms. So prior to the onset of scrotal pain and some other symptoms, we may actually start to see urethral discharge first. 
So if you want to learn more about epididymitis, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.